Um, position coaches role, I want to talk about this. Uh, you know, a lot of you guys are coordinators, head coaches, maybe some of you are position coaches, but um, uh, we'll talk about that. I think it's important that we understand where we're at and uh, what our responsibilities are. Um, being scheme specific with what we do with our drill work, uh, how we do it at Wisconsin Luther, and uh, getting into our progressions, what we actually work on week to week to make our running backs better. Uh, I've heard everybody ask questions at the end of their presentations and, and not get a whole lot in terms of response, but it's there because everybody else does it. Um, just a real quick plug for Wisconsin Luther College. First uh, conference championship in program history this year. Uh, it was a three-way tie. Unfortunately, we had a conference loss, and so did other, team, other two teams in the conference. So uh, didn't get the playoff bid that we were hoping for. But um, program's definitely going in the right direction. Uh, if you guys know Coach Dennis Miller is our, is our head man out there, and uh, he's making things happen. So if you uh, have a kid, maybe, um, I don't know how if our recruiters get out this way, but I definitely have some uh, program information packets. I'd be happy to give anybody anything they uh, would like as far as that goes. Um, but position coach's role, it's a big deal to me that, that you understand you take responsibility for the, the quality of play at your position. Um, I didn't understand this. I, I'm ambitious, like Coach Keith said. I'm just biding, biding my time until I get a coordinator job and get a head coaching job and, and go, uh, you know, roll through towns demolishing teams. But until then, I'm a position coach. And if you're a position coach, you've got to understand my last point there, make the big time where you're at is the same as taking responsibility. You've got one job, it's your position. Make sure the quality of play at that position is good. If you can't do that, then you have no business talking about what you ought to be doing or who's overlooking you for whatever assignment. Um, you, there are some things about your, the quality of play that are out of your control. A running back, if, if we don't block well up front, our stat line's gonna suck whether I'm doing my job or not. Same thing if you're a defensive back with coach with no pass rush and you're covered for 14 seconds. All right, so there's things that you can't control, but there's also things that you do control and that you ought to control. And being assignment sound is number one to me, making sure that if my guy, regardless of how athletic he is or how talented he is with the football, that he knows his assignment every play and he's carrying that out to the best of his ability every play. That's my job as a position coach to make sure that he can do that and does do that. Uh, if he can't do it, he can't learn it, then i got to find somebody who can, whether he's the most gifted or not. Because, again, we can't run plays if kids doing the wrong things. Yards after contact. I would say I don't care if you get hit five yards in the backfield for the first contact or 20 yards downfield. You better be fighting and clawing and spitting and biting for every freaking inch of the football field. And the coach and the fans and me and our other players have to understand when they watch us carry the ball that we mean it. That we're carrying, it doesn't matter if it's blocked up or not, we are fighting for everything we can get. And that's a reflection of me. If you're going down, that's a reflection of me. Ball security, another one obviously, uh, besides mesh issues, we control ball security and we ought to have it. Uh, another thing about position coaches, bringing enthusiasm every day, I think that's huge for position coaches. Um, I read something about Urban Meyer way before he just won a national championship saying that if you come see his practices, you'll see a bunch of coaches coaching like their hair's on fire, running up and down the field, getting after kids, because if they won't coach that way, he'll fire them. And, uh, and, and I agree, and I, I think it's, it's important. Um, we have two hours a day to try to teach kids how to be football players. And some of them have it naturally, some of them are just freaking balls of energy and piss and vinegar, and they want to go smack kids around, but we all know that's not every kid. And so if you are bringing it as a position coach, you can elevate the level of play of your position that way. And you got head coaches and coordinators worried about X's and O's and who's filming practice and who's doing everything that has nothing to do with getting players ready to play football. That's your one job. Make sure you're setting the standard for it. Uh, learn strengths and weaknesses. We, we all know that. That's a, that's a dumb bullet point. But the point is communicating it to your, to your players. Um, we talk strengths and weaknesses of our players at our position group all day long, but communicating that, that to them is uh, something that's tougher to do. So if you've got a running back that's fifth on your depth chart, make sure he knows why. 
Make sure you don't just run through the drills all year, sit them on the end of the bench or, or not in the games or whatever all year with no communication as to why he's there. That's your job as a position coach. All right, and uh, if he doesn't like where, where he is or what you say, uh, it, it, it's like my grandma always said, suck it up, pussy. Life's tough. <laughs> grandma didn't say that. <laughs> She's nice, <laughs> lovely. Anyways, it is tough news. It's not easy news to communicate, but it's your job. And make big time where you're, oh, I skipped one. Find ways to make your position group team within the team. Uh, group name, this year we were the X-Men, uh, the running backs. And we did this when we made a first down run, touchdown run, just a break tackle, stiff arm a kid in the face and run over a kid before you fall down run. Get up and do this to the sidelines. And uh, I don't know where we got that, uh, the head coach was, was talking about the X factor one day about who's going to be the X factor in this game. And uh, I took that and said that that's going to be us. And um, so we didn't communicate that to the rest of the team. That was our thing as running backs. And it was huge. You know, I, you don't understand how big something like that is, but it was a big deal. I, I don't believe that the running back position is the X factor on offense. I think it's offensive line, but I don't tell them that. I say, you know, we are, we, every offensive coordinator wants to run the football. So, we are going to get touches on the first two series. If we are running like I'm talking about, fighting and clawing and breaking tackles and running over kids, getting yards, then we're going to keep running. And if we keep running, we keep moving the football and scoring points. They're not on the field, so we score more than them. Everything works out the way we want to if we're producing. Conversely, if we're doing nothing, and we're not getting it done, we start throwing the ball more, we get behind, and we start throwing the ball more to catch up, and we lose. So I convinced them that we are the X Factor, that's who we are. When we break down, we said X-Men, all right, that was everything it was. So when, when they make a big play and get up and did this towards the sideline all jacked up, our other running backs are doing the same thing, it meant something to us. And then if that kid came out for a series and another kid went in, it was the same thing. It wasn't an individual, look at me, I made a play. It was our running backs, we, we, we know what we're doing, we're going after kids and we are the X-Factor. Whether we were or not didn't matter, it mattered to them. Uh, the last thing I'll say, the events at, at my house, I started having running backs over to my house and that was huge. And, and I tried to think about why that helped so much and, and I didn't really, I don't really have an answer. Um, but I think, you know, our running backs, we don't get a decent running back from Wisconsin for our life. I wish we did, but we don't. Between the WIAC and uh, 19 other Division three schools in Wisconsin, Pickens are just slim or whatever reason. But the moral of the story is our starters from Chicago, our backups from Houston, we got a couple from Florida, and we get them from all over the country, we get these kids. When I bring them to my house, I live in Waukesha, Wisconsin. If you've ever been there, it looks like every other town in Wisconsin. It's very white, all right? So I bring this inner city group of running backs to my house and I let them play with my kids and I let my wife cook dinner for them and it means something to our group. It means something to them that, that I have them in my neighborhood shooting baskets, playing tournaments with me in the front yard, doing whatever, playing with my kids being part of my family, I think they look at me differently after I started that. And I think they play for me and uh, I, think it's, I think it's just helpful. So if you do that, good for you. Make the big time where you're at again. I think I touched on that um, until an AD figures out how good I would be or you might be. We're stuck doing what we're doing. Make sure we make it big where we're at. Be team specific. This is a Something that I learned, maybe it will be educational for you as well. Prioritize your position group time based on what skills are most important in your scheme. Now that seems, uh, I don't know, easy, uh, it seems obvious, but it wasn't to me. When I got running backs, I'd never been a running back coach, I'd never been a running back. So I said, all right, you know, get on YouTube, just like every coach here said, found some running back drills. I got Coach Schmidt, who was supposed to speak here, his running back drill DVD. Um, I talked to uh, the running back coach at Waukesha West, it's a school that I had came from prior to going to Wisconsin Lutheran, and I got all these drills together, 
and I got the run backs together and, and we get through fall camp and I had inherited a first team all conference kid. So the first like five, six games of the season, we're running for 150, 200 a game. I feel good, he's looking good, everything's perfect. Then he gets hurt and a freshman goes in. And the freshman goes in and uh, like the first, I don't know, first play, first series he was in, we're running this little spread out scheme where he's got to get to the outermost rusher, pin him inside, let the quarterback get out into space, read the concept, and throw the ball. Well, he gets out there and like tucks his arm like this and tries to buck this DN who throws him on his head, pressures the quarterback, disrupts the play. Uh, so obviously I'm pissed, but I, I, I didn't know why I was doing it like that. Come back, next pass protection play, similar situation. Didn't get his hands on him, just kind of leaned into him really high. What really poor technique if you saw it on film. And then he gets to the sideline and I'm like, what the hell are you doing? You're missing blocks all over the place. Says so, sorry, whatever. Well, we get into it, I start thinking about it. We don't teach blocking. Every run back drill that anybody told me is footwork and ball security. Footwork, ball security, footwork, ball security. And there's 80 plays a game and we're running it for 30. Between running backs, quarterbacks, and the slots, and everybody else, we're running at 30 out of 80 plays a game. But all the drill work we ever do in my ending period is footwork ball security. So take those 80 plays, decide, are you route running? Are you receiving? Are you pass pro blocking? Most of you guys I know out here, because I've been out here, is run blocking. you got 14 running backs and 14 tight ends, and you smash them all into each other. All right? If you're run blocking, make sure run blocking is part of your ending progression. If you're route running, make sure that's part of your indie progression. Don't ask him to go out into the route concept or pin the end on a sprint out concept without getting that into your indie time. Understand, I understand and I still do, we'll talk about when we get into our drills, that footwork progression and ball security and running back skills are <coughs> the focus of it. But don't set a kid up to fail by not talking about things you need to talk about that you're going to ask him to do on the field. I touched on this about bringing the enthusiasm, but understand that position indie is always going to be right at the start of practice, right after you get done stretching out, doing your thing. And you, as a position coach, need to set the tone for practice. And again, most of you guys in high school, with the size of staff you are, even if you are the head coach, you've got a position group. Make sure you set the expectation and attitude and effort and all of that by how you run your indie drills. We don't run block, we're the spread gun, just like everybody else in college football now. Um, but uh, so everything we do is broke down into footwork progressions uh, and ball security is a, a component of that, receiving progressions and, and pass pro. Um, I'm going to get into, well, no, my, let me talk about my drill menu first. Drill menu, this is a PDF copy of, of my drill menu minus uh, a couple of the scheme specific things that we work on. Um, it's, it's just pasted straight into this PowerPoint. So uh, a drill menu is an awesome idea. We got it from a video. I wish I knew which one it was. Um, a video that our offensive staff watched together. But basically, each position coach had to come up with a drill menu that they submit to the head coach. And we have a lot of turnover, as a, a lot of programs do. Maybe you do, maybe you don't. But it, it's helping us because we all submit a drill menu to the head coach. Then if the tight ends coach accepts a head coaching job, the new guy comes in and they go through the drill menu with the head coach. All right, this is what these tight ends have been coached up on. This is what they do in their ending period of time. Now, if that guy has his own stuff and he says, you know, I, I, I like this, it's all pretty similar anyways. There ain't nobody doing anything revolutionary. But you, you can keep what you want to keep. You can edit it how you'd like to, but it's not going to be completely one way with one guy new coach, new <coughs> system with a different guy. It's going to be the same stuff with a little bit of that guy's you know, personal style or whatever. But that way there's never any full turnover. Everybody's drill menu stays with the team. When you go on, you can take it with you, but they have it where you left. Uh, footwork, -wise, we have Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, our big practice days. Um, Friday's walk through, Monday's a film and game plan install type of day. And we do footwork progression no matter what. So I do agile bags Tuesday, cones on Wednesday, and speed ladder on Thursday. So they never have to do the same 
uh, drill progression twice for footwork in the same week, but then additionally, within that 10 minute or 15 minute, depending on how the practice plan breaks down, I'll get in the receiving progression or the pass pro progression on alternating days or something scheme specific. If we keep jacking up something, that's my time to say, hey, we gotta fix this. We can't be executing at this level. Allow myself to climb the coaching ladder as quickly as I'd like to. All right, so here we go, some film. Uh, I don't know who who it was. Uh, Danny, Coach Danny, was he the guy from Marshfield? Is he in here? Anyways, he was he's talking about how bad his film was. Mine might be at least as bad. But uh, I didn't know I was doing this until I got the call, and then when I did, I'm just going to start pressing buttons and see what happens. When I did get the call, the kids were out of. That's a little too much, isn't it? Oh, right. work for us? Yep. The kids are out of school until this week. So I, I, I got lucky and found a couple of my running backs that are in track. <coughs> um, they said, I got the gym from the basketball team for a little bit and hopefully we get it going. This is our agile bag progression. Uh, five agile bags is pretty standard. Everybody has that. Um, we start with forward two ins, which is Again, very basic. We'll, we'll get into other things. With the ball security, we always talk about five points of contact all the time. We don't want the ball arm moving. You want to run with your off arm. You say you can run faster if you're running track. But this ain't track. This is football. And that football needs to be secure. So the football needs to stay rocked up, locked on their chest with five points of contact. Fingertips, palms, forearm, bicep, chest. All right. And you'll see that it's pretty crappy right here and uh, maybe a little bit embarrassing, but they've been out of football for a while and they come in and run through some drills and I couldn't harp on them too much because they were doing me a favor. But uh, as you see, when we put the ball in our left hand, we do left leg lead all the way through, sprint five yards, and then we will always wrap around to the start. Some coaches will go in this way and that way, this way, that way, back and forth the whole time. I don't like that because we get through it fast, which is good. The kids want to work hard for you, which is good, but they're not going to give you that explosive full out effort on each rep and the focus on each rep when they're just go trying to go through it and show you how hard they can work. We already know they can work hard. We want the, the uh, repetition of doing these drills to actually get them faster. So when they go through and they're focused on getting their feet up and down as fast as they can, through those five cones and then explode in five yards or through those five bags. Then I want them to wrap around back to the front. Everybody gets back in line. We take one breath and then we're ready to focus again and do the same thing again and focus on that five seconds that you're getting through the reps or getting through the drill. All right, so ball's locked up. Left hand, left leg lead. Right hand, right leg lead. I wish I would have brought some of my equipment or had a fancy laser pointer, but uh, right there, that thing, that's a ball security bat I stole from my uh, elementary PE equipment shed. It's a uh, modified hockey stick for an elementary kid on a scooter. It works awesome. You can beat a kid with that hard and it's not going to do any uh, real damage, but it'll knock a football out if it's loose. And, uh, Anyways, you should get yourself one. People, I've seen guys with uh, like bats with boxing gloves on the ends, all sorts of things. That thing's perfect, and if you want one, I don't have an extra one, so I'm sorry. But that thing comes with me to every drill. The other thing is my chute. I made that thing, that, that PVC chute at the end of the, the bags there. I think it was about 20 bucks. I don't know how big the PVC pipe is because I don't know anything about construction. But I went to Home Depot, I told him what I wanted, he picked me out a couple joint things that I needed and a length of pipe that I needed, cut it up for me. I've adjusted it a couple times based on how low I want the kids to be, but it's huge. Main thing why it's huge, because they see the kids on YouTube from Alabama, they want to see uh, Trent Richardson and Eddie Lacey going through this drill and they got the PVC shoot and they think that makes them better run back. I get them to shoot, now all of a sudden they're going hard through drills thinking they're going to be Eddie Lacy tomorrow. They're not, but they think it, so it's fine. Other than that, I don't think it helped at all. 
But they, when they talk to their friends, they say, we do the same progression that Alabama does. They say, well, no kidding. Here, uh, I get the, the shield. Where I get the shield is, again, this is just trying to incorporate more into your basic agility uh, progression drills. So I added the shoot when we were doing the laterals, lateral two ends. Again, that's another just quick feet footwork drill. Now we're in the shuffle sprint, shuffle sprint. We sprint or shuffle laterally, sprint forward one bag, shuffle laterally, sprint forward one bag. And then when they come through the shoot, I give them three looks. If you can see in the dark right here, if they're coming through the shoot at me, if I'm squared up on them, I call that a grave read. If a safety or a linebacker comes to fill, you got a good hole to look at, and he comes to fill, and he's square on you, you have to set him up then. You either set him up inside and bust it outside, or set him up outside and cut it vertically. But either way, you can't just sit there in the hole and juke your feet or run right over him. Because you got a chance to make a big play here. We've created the gap that we wanted. Everything is how we wanted. You need to set it up. So when I give him a great read, I want to see a move. I want to see him bait me one direction and cut the other direction without me getting them. The other ones, if I come outside in, if I'm coming outside in like a folding in, uh, like a rover type player or a slot defender, and I'm folding into the play outside in, then I need them to see the stick their foot in the ground and get vertical now and beat me inside. If I'm full, coming inside out like a linebacker scraping, all right, then I want to see them bust outside with a stiff arm. So you'll see, I don't know how many of them right now, but uh, this first one here, oh, that's back to laterals. I didn't make individual tape for each one. So I just set myself up on the other side of the chute. They're going through the footwork, footwork, and I come inside out on them. He gets a hand on the shield, and he's busting it outside with a stiff arm on the shield. It's also good for me because I can feel when I got six, seven running backs to go through, you can feel just by doing, inserting yourself in the drill a little bit, who's really got some power, who really explodes. You know, your, the vision test is one thing, but when you feel a punk punch you in the chest with a uh, hand shield on, then you know who can make some yards for you and who can't. All right, and then I just come backward outside in on him, and then he's going to try to bust it up upfield. Just a way to incorporate a little more football-specific movement into your drills. And then, it, like I said, we just work the other side. Ball's in the left hand. Start at the front right. Then you're going to – that's a rough start. I'd like a better stance and start. Coming outside in on him, he's busting it upfield. Come inside out, stiff arms, gone. We call this Alabama Agility because, again, it's a, another YouTube drill we stole. Uh, I do like it. We go one, two, one, two, lateral shuffle over. Again, I switch back to the ball security bat now, smack it a couple times, and then with my free hand, I'll rip at the ball too. So I'll smack him once with the ball and then I'll rip at it, making sure if that thing moves, I just, just say push ups till you die. And then I don't let them come back to the drill until they just die of push up failure. All right? You only have to do that once or twice, and they'll hold it pretty tight. That's Alabama agility. You start on the second to last bag, straddle in the bag. When I say go, you're one, two, one, two over the top of every uh, agile bag. Once you have both feet outside the last agile bag, you turn and burn one through under the chute. Another good thing about that is you'll always, always during camp have a couple freshmen just eat shit hard. And uh, that's always good for morale. There, I just got out of the way so you can see it a little better. All right, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, both feet out, plant and go. All right, if they're hanging on that outside bag where this kid was, hanging right there too long, then you're too slow. You can see a difference between a kid who can move and a kid who can't. If they're too far, if they're standing too far upright, all right, and you need to talk to them about getting their hips underneath them so they can turn and transition. That's, you know, everybody who's a running back is there because they're already a fast kid, but you need to take the fast kid and make him an exceptionally <laughs> fast kid. And that's about getting low and being good tech with your technique. This is the last step of our agile bag progression. We do jump cuts. I just set, take one bag out. <laughs> Set the other two up into two L's. 
So we jump cut to our right first, jump cut back to our left, under the chute, and then I'm back at him with the reed. Uh, the big point with this is to get down into the V or the crease of the L. All right, a lot of kids will just try to bend it from the top of that bag. They'll just kind of drift over to the other edge. You don't want that. You need to get them down into the crease with a good hard jump cut. Make it as realistic as they can. See, Reeves, that kid going through right here, he's a three-time first-team all-conference and an all-American kid. And uh, so his drill work sucks. And I, I've heard that as a common theme with other coaches all day, saying, well, this kid is really good, so we allow him to do this and that. I wish it wasn't the case, but it just seems to be the way some of those kids are when they get comfortable with how good they are and they put working hard at it. This kid right here is about 5'8", 160, and he'll never play down, but he works his ass off. All right, so that's that. Again, I'll, I'll, I didn't do the uh, speed ladder progression because for speed ladder, we just use the uh, yard lines on a football field. I don't know if any of you guys do that, but it works out pretty slick. Uh, we don't do anything revolutionary with the speed ladder progression. What I did want to show you and wanted you to see with this is you can definitely build a chute for your program or two or three really cheaply and you don't have to buy those big offensive line shoots and steal them. You can build a PVC pipe chute real easy. You should get a ball security bat um, and you should have more than one defined uh, footwork progression so that your kids ain't just beating those agile bags every day because you'll see that the focus falls off if you just have this monotonous routine that you go through. All right, again, we start off with forward two and same thing. We just put those cones about a yard apart and then just beat them, rip at that ball with the ball security bat. Here's the snake drill. It's just about getting your foot around the cone as fast as you can, moving side to side. Uh, again, I'm on the wrong side for the for the strip, but I didn't want to be in the way of the video here. This is ball, left hand, balls in the left hand, left leg lead. And you just want one foot on each, around each cone. One tap on each side of the cones. This we call one, two, two, one. Um, this is just a, like a rhythm and cut drill. You never need, you're never gonna know when you're gonna have to make a cut, what foot you're gonna be on. So we say one, two, two, one, one, two, two, one. That's a, when you're counting your feet. One, two, then that, the second foot is the first one back up. So that's why, that's why we call it that. Basically, if you find out a kid cannot dance, he can't figure it out by the second week of fall camp, he ain't gonna be your running back. If the kid ain't coordinated enough to put his foot up and put it, pick it up and put it down, he ain't gonna be it. Say, go play tight end. Go play linebacker. Find something, but you ain't gonna be my running back. You can't even go one, two, two, one. That one was a little too much hopping. I don't want to see it hopping. I want to see one, two, two, one over and over again. You should be able to see each foot hit the ground, not one, not simultaneous like that. This is just a ball security drill. We do pop-ups. Most fumbles occur as you're going to the ground, not when you're running upright with the football. Or you shouldn't be upright, but more upright. As in, in the process of being tackled, the ball comes out when you go to put your hand down, if there's separation from your chest, it's coming out if you get hit. And so that's what we're trying to drill out of them right now. We want them, it doesn't matter what foot he's on, uh, the, the hand that's going down is the free hand. But when that free hand goes down and you touch the ball, or touch the ground, there shouldn't be any separation with the football and your chest. All right, you pop back up and keep running with the football. But that's the main thing I'm looking for. Again, mid-season or, or when I'm not trying to get out of the way for the drill work here, I'd be right behind them. And so as soon as they go down, I punch hard underneath their armpit. And if I can punch hard and make that football come out, their elbow isn't tight enough. There's no separation. Up and down, running, doesn't matter what you're doing. That football needs to be tight to your chest. Just do the other, and here we do every other cone. Every other cone, sprint five. All right, then here we go to jump cuts. 
Um, I incorporate just our uh, outside zone action. You know, we're a, a zone one back power. Every everything that every spread run game is. Uh, there's not a whole lot you can do from it. So uh, we do what everybody else does. We're offset gun. We do some pistol stuff, but not a whole lot. Uh, so we incorporate our outside zone into this. I say go take our outside zone footwork for the quarterback so they get the mesh. From the mesh point, all I did was take one cone out of the middle of my cone progression line, set it up even with the uh, top cone. I don't know, again, I wish I had a pointer. But uh, this guy right here, that, that's the middle cone from right here. I just take it, put it up there, put the chute on the inside of the line of cones, and I'm set up and ready to go. So transition time is almost nothing. Run, grab it, move one cone, set up the chute, and get ready to rock. All right, I say go get the mesh. He's on outside zone pass, so we're drilling something scheme specific. You could set it up for whatever is your scheme. He gets, again, footwork sucks, but uh, when he gets there, I want to see his outside foot in the ground and tight to the cones, tight to that line of cones. He should stay tight to the line, whether he's on the outside of him or once he jump cuts on the inside of him. All right, I should see one foot in the ground one jump cut, and then still tight to the opposite side of the cones when he gets under the chute. All right, that's too easy. That's scheme specific stuff, drilling footwork, cutting hard. Again, too much of a hop in between there. That should be straight line running down the line of cones one distinct vertical or horizontal cut and then exploding under the chute and through the hole. All right, so those are our uh, footwork progressions. Again, like I said, we've after we really got into um, dissecting our film and figuring out what we do, we found out <coughs> that a receiver in the passing scheme, whether it's as a check down in a five-step drop, whether it's in a flare or some part of our like double screen where we flare one side and tunnel screen the back side uh, or, we, or it's just your, your classic slow screen, whatever it is. Uh, we're a receiver in some capacity in about 10 plays, 15 plays a game, 10 to 15 plays a game. We're blocking in our quick protection or our drop back protection 20 to 30 plays a game and we're running the football 20 to 30 plays a game. And that's what we do. So we incorporate this receiving progression into what we do. Uh, we try to say with our five, 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 everybody's partnered up. You get five high, five low, five left, and five right. They need to be with some purpose on them. All right. When you, we first started, the kids are playing catch. And I'm like, if we're going to sit here and play catch, why don't you stop wasting our freaking time and do something else? Walk go block kids or move a sled. But if you're gonna do it, make sure they're passing with purpose because if they're just playing catch, it's a waste of time. When the five high ones, you wanna make sure you get the thumbs down. Five low ones, the thumbs are up. Same thing left to right, that you're catching it with your, make sure they don't got their hands backwards catching left to right, that they're looking the ball in, have their hands placed correctly, all those things. That's why I put them close together that way, even some uh, you know, uncoordinated non-football athlete running back can still zip it at the kid. All right, we're five yards apart. Each partner, each running back has a partner. If there's odd number, then I'm a partner, and we get through this in about 20 seconds. All right, you zip it at them high, zip it at them high. We run the hands before we catch it. All right, and we go to. I don't know how many they they do back and forth here because I had to edit out all their drops. <laughs> it wasn't bad. It was like two or three. All right, but either way, you get a low, it's not gonna be perfect, but every day they're seeing that. They're getting 20 catches, at least, that are specific. You know, it's not just playing catch, we're drilling, we can catch each direction. We can catch a ball that's not being tossed at us like a loaf of bread, it's, it's got something going on it. All right, and that's just good drill work if you know you're gonna be asked to catch the ball, because I said, especially with screens, you might only be calling your screen, you might be setting that up all half, and in the time you call it, your dick-fingered running back drops it. You're pissed off and you ought to be, all right, because it, it sucks. So I say, you know, we don't, we don't get the amount of uh, receptions that a, that a receiver might, 
but our receptions matter. You know, when, we, when we call that screenplay, we expect it to go. And if you can't get from here to there with catching the ball, then you're a track athlete with a helmet on. We don't want you. All right, the second step of this is the 10 quicks. I used to do this myself. I would stand and I'd have a line of eight running backs and I'd throw the football at them and they'd you know, try to catch it whichever way I threw it. Much better now, they stay partnered up. We can get through it and however long it takes to watch this film right here. 10 seconds, you get 10, switch with your partner, they get 10. It's not something that you spend a whole lot of time on, but it's something you make sure you get in. The distraction drill, most wide receivers have seen something similar to this, if not the exact same thing. All right, we catch the ball in traffic with screen passes. We catch the ball in traffic with uh, check downs, you know, try, trying to find a window with the quarterback. And, and uh, we just want to make sure they can find the ball through the traffic and look it into their hands. So we just send them across and throw it at them. And they distract each other and, and go on. Again, we can get through the whole progression in four minutes if we're working. Uh, and that's one one practice period if you're if you're looking at it. Oh, and then at the very end, I think might have missed it here, but at the very end we rep our scheme specific stuff. Alright, so if we got our like I said, we we're involved in two or three screenplays, I make sure we get reps at that. Um, and as far as in the actual route combinations, we don't do that. Some, t some spread teams do, you run little angle routes, whatever, we don't. So on, on all our quicks, we're in the, it's a full slide protection with us, <clears throat> picking up the backside the end. We wrap that in our blocking scheme. Uh, in our drop pack uh, pass protection, it's a big on big halfway and slide on the backside and, and we're blitz pick up to the play side, so that's how we do it. This, I had the film of and it's gone. I don't know where the hell it is, all right? But our first thing with the punch is from the knees. And then I go to add it to my huddle tape here, and it's gone. I don't know where it is, and I wasn't going to call those kids up and say, hey, I somehow jacked it up and lost a video. So what I did was took the second step of our video, which is moving it into punch, and just cut it out so all you see is the punch. All right, and it still looks like crap. You'll have to deal with it. But uh, the first step of our pass pro is punching the bag. I told you how that kid came in and had his hands down and just tried to lower his shoulder. Uh, that's, I said, you know, who, who taught you to block? He said, nobody did. And I was like, well, who the hell's your coach? And found out it, it, it's me. But I, I should have blamed his Pop Warner coach, but some of them don't have that. Some of them don't have a high school coach that's worth crap, especially if they're the biggest, baddest running back that their school has, because they can run through pass protection. They might not even be asked to pass protect. They just give them the ball and let them score touchdowns. And if they are asked to pass protect, they might be able to knock every kid over they play against. So doing it the right way is something that, uh, you know, can slip through the cracks for some of these kids. Anyways, when we punch from the knees, all I'm looking for is what everybody's looking for when, they're, when they engage in a block. With their elbows tight and their thumbs up and their chest up, and they get a wide base so that they can engage that blocker and keep them in front of them. I ain't looking for them to... to blast the kid over in our pass protection, but I definitely don't want them to miss. So they got to settle on their feet and get a good punch with their hands and be able to move their feet and play defense, play basketball defense. We talked to them about that a lot, stay in front of them. All right, all right. this is still those punches that I, again, had edited. So this is more of a settled punch. This is from a running back position. We're going to come up to the line of scrimmage, take on like a blitzing linebacker or in the case where you have angle, it would we would just take the same drill and angle it towards the D end. But he's going to come up, settle onto his feet, get his heels in the ground, get his butt down, get his numbers up, and punch the dang agile bag. When we have pads on, we do it without an agile bag because it's just more realistic to get your hands on a player. All right, here's the mirror drill. A lot of run back. This is you know pretty common between. Uh, run back individual drills, um, but just mirroring, moving your feet, teaching yourself that you can't reach and lunge and grab after everybody that's trying to pass rush by you. You gotta get your feet in front of them, keep your chest in front of them. 
So we're just trying to keep our feet, no matter where they go, stay squared up on them, keep our shoulders square the line of scrimmage, keep a wide base, keep our feet active. And then the second step of that, after everybody's gone through that, is to make sure if I say hit, I just have that guy with the hand shield come across the line of scrimmage and then he's going to deliver a punch. He's going to deliver a punch and hopefully he does it quickly with his hands in his holster. He comes across, when I say hit, bam, he gets into hitting position, delivers a blow. All right, so when he finds the guy coming across his line of scrimmage, bam, he's going to make contact without lunging at him, without getting off balance. He's going to deliver a blow and, and, and protect the quarterback. All right, then we do hit, hit, hit. It's the last step of everything we do pass pro wise, uh, with the exception of I do a read drill with the linebacker, either coming or dropping out. And if he drops out, we do our check down. If he comes, we do our pass progress or pass pro. But here we go with our quick protection. We do quick protection with a flash fake across the quarterback into his protection. Depends on what the route scheme is. You know, so. If we're running slant arrow and we want to run a uh, arrow or a slant right at that outside backer, we're going to flash it because we want to hold them tighter to the box to buy us some time to hit the slant. So that if it's that, we'll flash it. If it's just a vertical speed out combination, we don't care about the backer as much, then we won't flash it. We don't want to give away tendencies with when we flash and when we don't. So the run back can be on either side, doesn't matter. We know based on the play where, which side we're protecting and that's what matters more, more than where we align. So here, we're, we're protecting the left edge of the offensive line, the line's sliding right. We have the DN who's the unblocked man or the outermost man if they bring pressure. All right, and I say hit, hit, hit. On the first hit, he steps up right there, steps up and get in, gets into stance. On the second hit, we get into the mirror drill. Mirror, third hit, Engage and drive them with your head inside, driving them inside out, out of the pocket. All right. Again, this is going pretty quick. Now I put him on the, the back side. Again, if we flash fake him into the protection, doesn't matter. Real quick, we're still ready to go. Hit, hit, hit. Get your hands on him, drive him out. All right, full speed. We'll do that one rep through, and then we'll just let him be a DN one rep and say, hey, you make a move. You spin outside, you bolt, you, you know, come back inside, set him up outside, come inside, let the running back speed the DN and just run it live. And then that way they get a realistic look of a kid coming in, trying to make a pass rush, and it's a competitive thing where they can, uh, you know, get after each other a little bit. All right, now I said, nobody's asked a question yet that I remember. Oh, Somebody did last time about uh, the screen rules, but um, if you have a question, we got about five minutes. I, I won't take any more of your time. I know you guys, the motivated ones, stay until the end, so I appreciate it. But uh, 